So today we are at Heritage Cycles and we're here with Josh. Josh, what kind of bike are we looking at? Uh, this bad boy is a 1986 Fuji Touring Series 4. Molk's Bikes. Yo, Molk's Bikes. Molk's Bikes. Apparently there are multiple series. I think this was like somewhere in the mid-level. I think the only thing original on this is the frame. So I guess it's not technically a Fuji Touring Series for the frame is though. And I think the crank set probably is as well original. I don't know, I got it kind of as a hodgepodge and I hodgepodged it even more after that. Yep, it's just my kind of all around commuter, uh, short trip type of bike. It's one of my favorites uh, that I have personally. Just kind of great for tooling around, running errands, commuting, aimless meandering, all those types of riding. Touring even, could do a tour, could do bike packing and have some pretty smooth terrain. How did you come into this bike? A customer came into the shop and they traded it. It was their old touring bike. They had the drop bars, like the original setup. They did make some changes to it, but they traded it in for some labor on another bike. It fit me and it hung up on the ceiling for a while. I just kind of gazed at it longingly for a few months and eventually took it down and started putting my own flair on it. Let's start front, go to the back. All right. First off, tell me about uh, what kind of bag and cargo basket, like what, what, what do you know about that stuff? So this basket is just a classic walled 137. It's zip tied to a Velo Orange, some sort of rack that my co-owner of the shop gave to me or I adopted because it fit this bike so well. So the basket's zip tied to that. Inside I have a, a custom bag made by Donut Sacks. He uh, runs a uh, custom bag, mostly his own bag out of Westerville, which is here in Central Ohio as well. David at Donut Sacks does a great job. I have a couple of his bags. What's this underneath your saddle here? This is also a Donut Sacks tool roll, roll bag that David David made for me. I, I think he gifted it to me. Um, I don't remember what the reason was. Maybe just friendship is probably <laughs> how, how that went. Uh, but he also I asked him if he could make a uh, front basket bag, and uh, this was actually his prototype. But yeah, it's kind of perfect. Fits in the bag fine. Um, it just has these cool little straps that you can lift it in oh, and out. Oh, nice. Um, and so I have multiple bikes with a walled basket, and this makes it handy to where I can just pop the bag out of the basket and switch it over to another bike. Cool, man. What are your bars? So these are Surly Open Bars, and they have two versions of this, I believe. They're chromoly. Um, this one, it has a rise. I think it's a 40 millimeter rise. Just fit this bike perfectly. I stripped off the black paint, and I'm kind of just letting it patina a little bit with a little bit of rust and then before it gets too bad I'm going to clear coat it make it nice and, and shiny looking what I did find on this was pretty cool after I stripped the paint off it was all black with white surly logos and then oh. after I stripped the paint there was a black logo underneath of paint uh, which was kind of a cool That's surprise cool. so I just I just left it on there the reason I ended up with these bars is because what I originally wanted to do is go with a modern bar that has a sweep that's wide, um, that's just a nice classy uh, classy cruiser type of bar. Um, and what I wanted was a Velo Orange Grand Crew bar that with those, I would have needed a 31.8 clamp on my stem. This original stem does not come out. Oh. And I don't care what you say, it's not gonna come out of there okay. unless I dissolve it with, with uh, sodium hydroxide or something, which is a possibility. I might do that one day, luckily, it's in here straight and it's at a pretty good height and it works well with these bars. And if I ever want to change bars again, I have to get invasive and remove this stem, which will not budge. If I yanked on it any harder, I would I would have twisted the forks and I didn't want to do that. So I, got I just left that in there. And that's what kind of bike like, this is. It's I like, like it. You have to adapt and you have to uh, figure out what works. And uh, those bars were kind of a, a happy accident. What kind of grips are you running on here? These are kind of funny grip. These are actually a knockoff. Planet Bike makes the cork yeah. cork grip. Um, the, the specific name. Cork Chop Grips by PDW, not Planet Bike. I think this is what I have on my state. Okay, so they, I think a couple of companies have knocked them off. Yeah. This one is, uh, I think it says Pure Cycle, but they're the exact same. But if you're gonna buy these, I would say go to PDW and get the pork chop because I think those are the OG ones. But they're great, they're rubber and cork kind of mixed up. 
there. It's super cozy. And What do you know about this bell? Uh, this is a super loud bell. You're gonna blow your speakers, watch out. It is. Um, this is, I don't know if this is a knockoff too, but made by Origin 8. The, uh, I think it's a school bell, something like that. That's cool, I haven't seen that before. Everybody gets out of your way when you ding this. That's you, nice. You frighten them on the yeah. bike path. Time clock, that's it. Oh yeah? It's an Origin 8 time clock. All right, cool. Yeah. Nice. So I, I skipped over your brake levers. Okay. I imagine those are not from the original build. No, nah, these are just your, your simple uh, Avid brake levers. They're robust. They'll uh, work on pretty much any bike. They do the job. They're and what kind of brakes do you have on these candies? Yeah, these are can cantilever brakes, uh, Diacomp. Diacomp. Those are OG. I guess if there are any cons to this bike, uh, I do like those bikes or these brakes because they're versatile. They're not very powerful. Yeah. Um, so it, I might upgrade that eventually. Uh, they, they do work perfectly fine in dry conditions, but when it gets wet, they just don't grab very well. Even with cool stop pads on the back, um, it's still kind of kind of sketchy when trying to stop. Um, yeah. You just got to pull a little bit harder. And don't don't go saying, oh yeah, that's rim brakes, because I've had plenty of rim brakes that will stop on a dime in the rain, right. in yeah. the snow. Yeah. So don't pull that crap, guys. Come on. Yeah, Leave it true. out of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got some that work and some that just slow you down. Yep. Um, so that, that needs some attention. Talk about this here, the stabilizer thing. I'm, I'm not even familiar with what that is. Uh, so this is a Velo Orange stabilizer. I think it's a, uh, there's, there's not, I don't know of any other companies that make this. So it's, it's just like a, a wheel stabilizer. Bargain. That's very helpful when you have a front basket that's loaded with a bunch of junk like I always have. Um, it keeps this from swaying. It's also nice coupled with a double kickstand. This is a double kickstand made by Pletcher and it, it goes on one side when it's not engaged. Double kickstand goes up. They both come to the one side, just like a, a traditional greenfield kickstand. Nice. When you swing it back out, you lift up. It just makes everything nice and straight. And it's it's nice when you have a front basket as well. Yeah. It keeps things from flopping over I and knocking your bike stands. over. Kickstands are so great. Yeah, that's a lovely kickstand there. It is. Tell me about your, your frame bag. Uh, this frame bag was built by a buddy, our buddy James kind of does bags on, on the side and he put this together for a cross check that I had a few years back and coincidentally it fits this frame, I think even better than it fit the cross check. And I like it a lot, it's waterproof, um, put, put yet more of my junk in here and it's always handy. Nice to put snacks and things in there where they, you can kind of grab on the go. Another favorite part of this, of this setup is that that bag that I loved fit perfectly. Uh, let's talk about drivetrain. Okay, so what I have for shifters up here are micro shift, like thummy style shifters. Um, this is actually, there, uh, I have it set up friction here. This is actually a left front shifter, flipped upside down and backwards. So it works with a ratchet and it controls my back uh, rear derailleur. Okay. And then, you know, conversely, this one controls my front, even though it, it's a rear shifter. So, so it's flipped over to friction. Yeah, that controls my. At least that's not confusing. No, and it's, and it's, yeah, not at all. Not not confusing for me, but yeah. Right, right, if somebody right. else rides my bike, they're saying. gonna be like, what? Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, but it works great. It just makes the thummies a little more ergonomic um, to go underneath for me, because that's where my thumb is. Usually our thumbs aren't on yeah, top of right, the bars. Right, so yeah. it just feels comfortable and into See, that's why they're that all, way. Okay, that's, that's why, why you switch, switch sides. sides. Yep. So they, okay, makes sense. Yeah, that's way cool, they, man. Yep. Um, so you have a triple cassette up front. Yeah. I think this is original. It has, I don't know what the teeth count are. I'm not super technical when it comes to stuff, even though I Ooh. run a bike shop and I'm a mechanic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't look too far into details a whole lot of times on my own personal bikes. I just uh, kind of ride them yeah. and then change them as needed. But yep, there's a small amount of gears on this tiny one. More gears yet on this, or teeth yet on this middle chain ring, and then the most on that large <laughs> chain ring. And that's about as technical as you can get. That's on that, that's um, good. And, and I've never felt like I have ran out of gears on this bike. Original crank? I think it's, yeah, it's new a Geno. Pedals. New pedals, those are uh, MKS Gamma pedals. Some of my favorite pedals out there. I've had them on multiple, this same pair on probably two or three different bikes over the past maybe four or five years and there's n never been a inkling of play. Nice. Yes. They spin just like they're brand new. MKS made in Japan. Super nice pedals. 
Is this real to real? Is this original? No, that's not original. It did come to me on this bike. I mean, you can't go wrong with a Dior yeah. rear derailleur yeah. uh, LX. And it, I have it set up friction. So, I mean, it's long cage. I can put whatever wheel with any, you know, gear cluster in the back and it's gonna work just fine. Uh, bottle cages? Yeah, I was gonna ask you about the, is it special for any? No, it's, uh, this is just kind of my, my overspill bottle cage. This is a Velo Orange. It's a nice versatile bottle cage that I use for if I have a, a third bottle that I'm carrying that's kind of short and it does have to be short. Uh, this oh, one would yeah. work fine. Yeah. But if it's any taller, it'd hit the wheel. But it's a good third one to have. That's pretty Sometimes cool. Sometimes I'll put my uh, my coffee mug in there. Who makes this one? That's also a Velo Orange and it's the they're oversized. I think it's the starts with an M. I have one of those. Yeah, you probably got it here. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's the Mojave. I didn't see this. I was like, oh yeah, now I recognize it. You squeeze it. Yeah, it's yeah. the Mojave bottle cage by Velo Orange and it's oversized, I think three and a half inches or whatever, an Algene. For an Algene. And it pops in there just perfectly. Um, this is kind of the same setup I have on all of my bikes. And you have your squeezy bottle to, to grab as you're, as you're riding along and then when you need to refill, you just refill it with your Nalgene. Kind of the perfect setup. This, I think, bottle cage came with the bike. It's red and it kind of matches the logo. Oh, so yeah, I, yeah. I just left it on there. Um, you, got a, you got a pump on that side? A frame pump? Yes, I have a super fancy sunlight pump. It's not really that fancy, but it works fine. Presta or Schrader, because you never know if you're going to help somebody else on the side of the road. Has a hose which is important, makes things a lot easier to, to hook it up to your valve without uh, ripping it off. Presta and, and Presta Schrader. and Schrader, you have to flip some things around, but that's, that's nice too. That's most frame pumps, I would say. This one's cool because it kind of flips into like a baby floor pump. Oh yeah, um, a little easier. Yeah, so. Yeah. Who makes that? This is Sunlight. Okay. I'm kind of testing this one out so I can sell it to customers. Nice. After I uh, try it out and it just clips right to your bottle cage there. Tell me about your saddle. Is that a B17? Close. It's it's a flyer, which is, I think, the same skin as a B17. Same shape and everything. The difference there is that it has springs. Oh, yeah. I wanted to get a springy saddle for this bike since I'm running so narrow tires on it. I'm, I'm limited by my tire clearance on this bike. So I wanted to, to get something springy so my back didn't get jarred on every on every little bump that I hit along the way. Tell me about your tires. Are there anything special about them? You running WTBs? Yeah, WTB byways. Sorry, WTB, these, these aren't my favorite tire. Okay. They're okay, um, but they, they do the job. These were takeoffs from, from a trade-in bike that were in new condition and they fit this frame. They look narrower because it's do. a skinny rim. Skinny I got an 18 millimeter yeah. rim here. They're 40s, which is I think the max for now on on this frame until I make some augmentations, but I might just leave it. I'd have to get pretty invasive with that too if I want more tire clearance. This bike, I think, originally had 27s on it. Oh, yeah. I was happy to find that these Diacomps work well with 700 or 27. Um, it just takes a little bit of changing of this bolt, and it has a little... Cam? A little, yeah, like a cam that you can swivel around, mm -hmm. and it changes the level of where the... So this uh, was originally a 27 bike? I believe so, yeah. Oh, cool. When I got sense. it... This is 80s? Yeah, when it's like the lower level, 80s bikes, the higher level touring bike was probably a 700C, but for some reason like 700 went to the, the higher end bikes and then 27 kind of on the mid to, to lower end. I think that's how this bike was. When I got it, it had a, a 27 and a 700. Oh, okay. Like one in the front and one in the back. And it, again, like it was a hodgepodge when I got it. What's that, what's that on your hub? That's, <laughs> this is an old school, they call them hub cleaners. And that's not what the HC stands for, unless you want it to. <laughs> the HC stands for Heritage Cycles. We have a buddy that's that cool. lives kind of in the neighborhood that makes some small leather goods for us. His name's Log Cabin Steve. You always got a polished hub. Yeah, and that's always, and even, even though you can't see it until you take this off. But look at that, that's the cleanest part of this whole bike. That's cool. Nice. Is it, what kind of hub is it? It's a Shimano. Oh, it's a 600. Shimano 600. Cool. That's why I kept that hub. That's cool. That's a nice one. Sealed yeah. bearings. Way cool. Another thing you, I, I started alluding to was this, uh, this thing is going to be, it's going to, it's going to cause controversy mm -hmm. on your, on your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this Dork. is called, this is called a, a dork disc, I guess. And there's no other name for it that I'm aware of. Yeah, I take them off all the time to, for uh, people that, that don't want to be 
labeled as a dork. Um, but you can label me as that because, uh, yeah, I don't give a shit. This does have a function that some people don't quite realize. A lot of people say, oh, you, you must have a dork disc because you can't uh, adjust your derailleur, derailleur. Property or sure. properly or something like yeah. that. The fact of the matter is, even if you don't have a double kickstand, especially if you don't, your bike will fall over sometime. And sometimes when your bike falls over, your hanger gets bent and you might not realize it. And then you go to ride, shift into your lowest gear or past it and uh-oh, your, your chain falls into your spokes and rips your spokes off. And then you gotta call your mom to come pick you up. I don't have to do that because I have a dork disc. Good call, man. <laughs> Good call. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I figured they didn't put them on there for looks, but yeah. I didn't know that. That's, That's good. good. Keep your dork disc Keep on. Keep your dork discs, yeah. dudes. Public yeah. service announcement. Right. Rack, is that a Velo Orange? Yep, this is another Velo Orange. Also came from, from the co-owner, Thomas, that I'm either long-term borrowing or uh, have adopted. It's sleek and minimal, and I can put panniers on this, and it works just fine. It's very lightweight. What's this rear fender rig? This is some kind of ass saver knockoff. I don't even know where it came from. How is that on there? I, I bolted it to the bottom. There's a bolt hole. On oh, cool. Oh, way cool. There's two bolts on here, so yeah. it works pretty good as a uh, non-fender season fender. Nice. Uh, this bike, probably in a month or two, will get, get full fenders, I imagine, for the winter time. And then the other con, I guess, on this bike is uh, tire clearance. I got skinny 40s on there, which is, is skinny for me. It's a good balance. For, you still have a little bit of speed, too. Yeah, this bike is fast. Yeah. It's it's funny. I don't try, I, like, I, I am on Strava, and I track my rides, and I'll get notifications. And I, I don't try to crush my PRs or anything like that. But any PRs I do get in the past year or so are on this bike. And I ride the same roads as I have for the last seven or eight years. It's just funny that this bike, out of all my bikes, is the one that is the fastest. That's pretty cool. What about this bike do you know that I don't know? It's fast as fuck, boy. Fast as fuck. I'm, leave, I'm leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I guess is that I built it to be a bike that's a beater that, that I wouldn't like so much. That's That was my intention. Like I, I wanted to be able to, to ride it and leave it outside of the grocery store where I'm running in or not have to use a fancy lock yeah. to, and not, not be... Um, super stressed about dropping it and scratching it, which is the case. I mean, I'm not that concerned about keeping this bike pristine because it's not, but uh, with that, it's kind of grown into my favorite bike. And I, I probably would, if anything were to happen to any of my bikes, I would probably be most devastated if something happened to this bike. <laughs> Makes <laughs> which, sense, which man. Which is kind of fun, because all the other ones are easily replaceable. Um, yeah. This one, I'd have to source all these parts and go on eBay and it's just find that that perfect geometry of a frame that you know that's almost as old as I am and uh but it bikes all come and go and uh if I ever sell this one I'll, I'll probably regret it for a long time like I do all the bikes that I ever sell and Th Thomas said you got to do Josh's bike I think so bad like, yeah all right yeah that's right yeah he always says that and I'm just like really yeah it is I don't I just, it's surprising that other people would think that this bike is rad besides me. Like I know I like it. I do. Because yeah. because I built it and I and I like and I kind of suited it directly to me, but um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that other people like it too. Tell me about Heritage. Okay. Well, Heritage Cycles is a bike shop here in Grove City, Ohio, near uh, Columbus. And we've been in business for seven years this past spring. Uh, we've been in this lovely location for four years. Before that, we were in um, a previous location just down the road that was about half this size. We moved over here and we, we like it much better. It's kind of has a garage feel. It, it suits our needs a lot better than the old shop did. We got this cool big garage door we open on nice days, except when, um, when pristine sound is a factor. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our Heritage Cycles started uh, between me and a, and a buddy about seven years ago. I, I wanted to have a bike shop that was for, for all the people, that you know everybody deserves to have a, a, a nice bike shop that they could get a quality product from, to get their bikes worked on even if they're not racing or you know super, have super extravagant bikes or needs but they still deserve to have good quality bikes and their, their bikes uh, deserve to be to be fixed and uh, work properly you guys do a lot of service we do a ton of service mostly thomas over there with the ponytail he's the one that does it all his fingers are sore from it <laughs> 
So yeah, we do mostly service and we also offer bikes that are run the gamut of, of, of abilities. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of road bikes. We don't do a whole lot of high-end mountain bikes. We do uh, a lot of just pr practical style bikes. So mostly hybrids or, or a lot of steel frame uh, surleys and salsas, things that uh, are meant to take a beating and um, not so performance based, but still good quality. That's, that's kind of our, uh, our thing is uh, practicality and it's, and it's worked well for us. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's super Thank cool. You. Fuji. Touring Series 4. 4. Not a 3. Not a 3. Get it not right. Not a 5. Yep. Right. Super right cool. There. Made me like this bike more. Yeah, man. Me too. Man, I got some work cut out for me on this one. Dang it. Molk's Bikes. Yo, Molk's Bikes. Molk's Bikes. What are we not talking about? Anything we're missing here? Anything we're missing, Thomas? I don't know. Why is he got a triple on there? <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should have mic'd up Thomas too. So. Yeah.